Though in no way a new concept, the science, perceptions, and regulations of food safety are ever-changing and evolving. I'm your TAG Talks host, Lisa Lupo, and today I'm talking with TAG President and CEO, Dr. David Atchison, about 2022's food safety issues and events and his expectations for 2023. Good afternoon, David. Hi, Lisa. Good to be chatting with you one more time. Yes, and end of the year chat. Absolutely. So regarding food safety, what would you see as the most impactful events or regulatory hot topics of 2022? Great question. Um, you know, as we look at, at, at 2022, and every year is different on the food safety front, there's always some challenges. Um, I think if I was to characterize 2022, I would say it's been the year of chemical risks and FDA upheavals. Um, mm -hmm. So let's sort of dive a bit into what I mean by that. Um, and I want to preface this by saying we, even though I think um, 2022 was a, a year in which regulatory agencies and food companies focused more on chemicals perhaps than we have in, in quite some time, and I'll get to some specifics on those in a second, um, we shouldn't lose sight of microbiological risks because they certainly haven't gone away. Um, we kicked off the year with a couple of large recalls of listeria in, um, in produce. And there's been as just the usual steady ongoing recalls and outbreaks and problems associated with, with micro. So it sort of just continues unabated um, with those challenges. But um, so I, I, important that we don't lose sight of those and sort of keep that front of mind, um, along with other risks that, that, that start to emerge. Um, so chemicals, um, I think <clears throat> when we look at chemicals, I'm sort of thinking of it as, as some specific areas um, that really kind of emerged in 2021, actually, um, especially around heavy metals. Uh, congressional report early in 2021 that um, was pretty outspoken around the levels of certain heavy metals, arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury in infant foods, garnered a lot of, uh, a lot of attention from um, social and mainstream media. Um, not a lot happened in 21, but it definitely gained momentum so that in 2022, um, we've now got a whole new initiative from FDA on closer to zero. Um, mm -hmm with some focus initially on lead and, and, and cadmium and then arsenic and mercury not far behind. Um, so this, we can anticipate um, that that is going to continue as we sort of look forward also into 2022. Um, the agency looking to set action levels around these in foods beyond the small number that they focus on already. Um, but there's some big challenges, and I think that was why cleverly FDA called this closer to zero and not trying mm -hmm. to make out, we can zero out heavy metals because we cannot do that. Um, so that's a process that's, that's going to move forward. I anticipate that we're going to see suggested, recommended action levels for which the private sector and others can respond. Um, well, you know, are those attainable? Can we do them? Are they, do they make sense from a public health perspective? Um, again, not losing sight that we, there is, there is a lot that's been done to reduce particularly lead mm -hmm. in foods. Um, so this is not like a new topic, but it's definitely one that got a lot of momentum in 2022. Um, continuing on the theme of chemicals, um, PFAS, PFAS, yes. big deal, lots of noise about that too. That's all about packaging and, and, and these chemicals, which go, as I think most people know, by the, by the name of forever chemicals, for a reason is that they don't go away. Okay. Um, so they are present in the environment. And as we get better and better at measuring levels of some of these contaminants to the sub part per trillion, um, you find them. Um, and you know that's that's always kind of the challenge with chemical risks is just because it's present you find the hazard but does that constitute a risk to public right. health um and i think maintaining that perspective and that balance is just the presence does not there therefore mean necessarily that we've got a public health risk 
but they they've been a focus in 2022 and a lot of companies have have done the due diligence around talking to their packaging suppliers and other uh, ingredient suppliers. What are you doing to, to ensure that you're not sending any, uh, any food or packaging um, with any of these forever chemicals present? Um, and the vast majority of companies have certainly stopped using them and adding them deliberately, but they're around. So, and we've seen a couple of recalls um, during the course of the year. Um, ones that come to mind related to clams, I think, from Asia, um, in which there were detectable levels of PFAS. Um, slightly disconcerting thing about that is, what do you mean by detectable levels? Um, mm -hmm. And yet there was a recall. So one assumes that regulatory agencies saw whatever level it was posed a health risk and hence took a regulatory action. Um, so it, it has been the year of chemicals. Um, Going a little bit more broadly outside of the US, uh, the other chemical that's been a hot topic is ethylene oxide. And oh, it's right. a okay. breakdown product to chloroethanol. Um, mercifully, we've dodged that bullet in North America because we have tolerances for ETO, ethylene oxide, and to chloroethanol. Um, and it hasn't really become a huge issue, but it has, and again, this goes back to 2021, Lisa, too. It was an issue in Europe um, that, fear, concern around ethylene oxide has spread to Asia, and we've had some fairly hefty regulatory actions, recalls of products um, in, in Asia and in Europe um, around those chemicals. So um, also 2022, sesame come, mm -hmm. came front and center as an allergen. So if you put allergens under the chemical bucket, um, then that's a hot one too. So that's gonna become a regulatory requirement going into, into 2023. Um, so when it comes to those kinds of risks, those, those, those have been important. Um, changing gears just a little bit. Um, the year started out, 2022 started out with sad events around infant formula. <clears throat> um, number of, of children um, allegedly died because of the presence of uh, microorganisms in infant formula, Cronobacter sakazaki particularly. Um, obviously very sad events. Um, track back to, to infant formula and um, early in the year, uh, FDA had got involved in, um, in the oversight regulatory enforcement around that, um, getting into the plant that made it, um, plant closed down, um, obviously a lot of noise around that, a lot of angst around that. Um, the upshot of that was not only that this facility closed, but then there was a dramatic shortage of formula. Um, how much was due to lack of production and how much was due to consumers nervous about adequacy of the supply chain and stocking up? Um, I don't know what the balance is. It's probably a bit of a combination of both. But that was a, that was a bad start, rough start. To the year for the infant formula industry um, and for food as a, a, a as a whole um, and it sort of was the catalyst for some pretty heavy focus on well let me just sort of call it dysfunctionality within the food and drug administration <clears throat> 2022 also saw the publication of a fairly uh, vitriolic article from politico about the structure of fda mm -hmm. um, so the agency was kind of being attacked on all fronts. Um, <clears throat> I think there was still washover from the heavy metals that I talked about just now um, that kind of began in 2021. Um, but <clears throat> the upshot of all of that was calls from multiple segments for a review of FDA oversight and structure. Uh, commissioner took that seriously and he commissioned the uh, Reagan U Udall Foundation to undertake a um, a review of the FDA foods programs. He restricted that actually to human foods. So animal food kind of got left out of the mix for whatever okay. reason. <clears throat> so that report emerged a um, little while ago, a um, month or so ago. Um, and in the report, there were recommendations around reviewing the structure of the regulatory programs at FDA, number one. Number two, the culture around food safety mm -hmm. programs, number three, resources, um, <clears throat> and number four, authorities um, that the FDA may need. Uh, my take on that is 
<clears throat> there wasn't a lot in that report that hadn't been said in the past. Um, I think the good thing is that it pulls it all together, it focuses it. <clears throat> it was re requested by the commissioner and the commissioner has promised to take action at some point in 2023. So we'll see what he does with that. Um, <clears throat> some of the suggestions in there I thought were really good. Um, establishing a separate center for nutrition I think is an excellent idea and frankly long overdue. Um, the uh, Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, the nutrition part is, is almost just an add-on both resource-wise and personnel-wise, um, and yet nutrition is just a huge part of public health in, in, in the United States. So establishing a separate Center for Nutrition is a great idea. Um, whatever new authorities they need to, to change structures in a good way is, is, is going to be helpful. Um, and um, culture is always important. Um, so we'll see where it goes. But um, that was a that was, I think, a big, um, a big move for, for um, FDA. Um, sticking on the FDA, sort of another thought there is the Food Safety Modernization Act. Um, there's, there's been a focus in 2022, I think mostly on imports. We've seen a bunch of warning letters come out around forest foreign supplier verification program um, and, and lack of compliance with that. So that was a focus. Somewhat subjective comment is that I feel like the focus on the preventive control rule, rule has lagged a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, FISMA was created with the intention of a heavy focus on preventive controls. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> food companies have absolutely gone down that road. But it, it feels a little bit like FDA has taken their foot on, off the gas on that. Not for, foreign supply verification has got the focus. <clears throat> so I think um, that's just an observation around FISMA enforcement. Okay. Um, and then um, changing lanes completely. Let's talk about Food Safety Inspection Service. Um, big factor there was a number of announcements around um, salmonella. Mm -hmm. um, and the and that FSIS is going to put out new regs around salmonella regulation. Um, and we'll have to see where that goes. Is salmonella going to be declared as an across the board adulterant? Is it going to be specific serotypes? Is it going to link with quantitation? Not very clear yet. But um, from, from an FSIS perspective, it was the year of we're going to tackle salmonella and we're going to beat it. Now we've heard that before. So Time will tell whether these strategies are successful. So as always, a busy year in the world of food safety, Lisa. Um, right. Lots of things going on, lots of changes, lots of things to track. But um, that's, so that's, that's sort of high level thinking on where 2022 took us. Okay. So given all that, what <laughs> uh, expectations and even advice would you have for the food industry in 2023? Well, first off, I think we should anticipate on the FDA side continued regulatory pressure. Um, tolerance of being slow when the situations that might be a threat to public health definitely was pretty, that tolerance was pretty, pretty limited in 2022. And I don't see it getting any better in 23. So um, being ready for a, the bad day, you get a call from a supplier, you get a call from the regulatory agencies, your food's making people sick. So being prepared for that, do you have a recall plan? Do you have the programs in place? Have you practiced them? Um, is your traceability system good? Do you have good records to be able to figure out what went where quickly so you can act when something goes sideways um, swiftly and tightly because you need to move fast and you need to move tight. You don't want to be um, dithering because FDA will be putting press out saying we, they've got concerns around a particular product and the company's drag at its feet. Um, so I think 2023 is going to continue to be important there. Secondly, being FDA ready. Um, okay. <clears throat> I do see more focus on inspections uh, as resources allow. Um, so are your documents all in good order? Are you up to date with your food safety plan, your verification, validation, your monitoring, your corrective actions? Those analyses, are they all where they need to be and are your records all solid? Um, 
and, and ready for review by a regulatory agency. Um, when it comes to these chemicals I talked about, um, I don't see massive regulatory change in 23. I think uh, the closer to zero around the heavy metals will evolve through the year, but I don't see, I don't see big changes coming yet around that. Um, the unknown is going to be the structure. Is the structure of FDA going to change? Um, okay. um, <clears throat> there is a promise for some announcements, perhaps that's too strong a word, but, but some feedback from the commissioner early next year um, around what he's going to do with this report. It's got to do something, um, and we'll have to see what. That then translates is, is that just sort of internal within the agency and is it fundamentally going to have an impact on the food industry? Um, I think unlikely it'll have a huge impact on the food industry. I think it's those earlier things that I've said that will. Um, increased inspectional focus, regulatory actions, limited tolerance for taking your time. Um, we're already in that space and I don't see 2023 being any different there. Um, so life in the food in, in, in the food world is just increasingly complex. Regulatory <laughs> oversight is complex. Um, I think at, at, at a high level too, if you take it outside of the regulatory uh, space, I think all food companies have suffered from employee retention. Um, getting employees, keeping employees has been a challenge. Supply chain has been a challenge through 2022. I don't see that going away in 23. Um, COVID had a lot to do with triggering that, but even though the pandemic has, for the most part, has diminished hugely in terms of its impact on commerce and travel, um, the, the employee consequences have not diminished. Um, and I, I see that going into 23 and, I, and companies broadly are looking at how do we manage with fewer people, um, looking at automation strategies, looking at how they can leverage data less people, um, but still staying ahead of the risks. So um, that's a slightly broader view for the food industry, but it's not unique to the food industry around those ongoing challenges, which I think are gonna continue into 2023. So um, yeah, it's, okay. as always, we're, we're in for a uh, interesting year, but it's, that's true of every year, right? When it comes to food <laughs> safety, there's always something. That's kind of the way it goes, it seems, in this industry. So, right. Well, thank you so much, David, for your insights on 2022 and your thoughts and expectations and recommendations for 2023. Yeah. And thank you to the viewers for having joined us today and throughout the past year for tag team discussions of current and impactful industry trends and events. And as always, be sure to click subscribe to stay up to date on all things food safety and public health from TAG experts. Thank you. Thank you.